This is a Healthier Michigan podcast, episode five. Coming up, we discuss meal prepping and how to approach it. Welcome to a Healthier Michigan podcast. This podcast is dedicated to navigating how we all improve our health and well-being. We can all start with small, healthy habits, and we can implement them right now. I'm your host, Chuck Gatica. Each week, we will sit down with a certified health expert from Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan. We'll be covering topics like nutrition. That's what we're doing today with Grace DeRocha. Well-being, Cindy Bjorkquist will be joining us in future episodes. And then also talking about stress reduction and Dr. Dwayne DeFranco joining us there. So we're intertwining a lot of those topics in all of these episodes, but we've got experts for each one. And today, again, we have one of the best with us, Grace DeRocha. She is a certified health coach, a registered dietitian at Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan. She's also a blogger right here. If you found us by going to A Healthier Michigan, that's where you can find her blog posts as well. So maybe you're familiar already. She's a mom, two kids, a husband who keeps her busy as well, I'll bet. Master's in Business Administration from Wayne State, a graduate of the University or Michigan State University. Right? Chuck, no, yes. No, no, no. I, just, I got Go it green. right. I got it right before <laughs> it came out the wrong way. So MSU, Wayne State, and you just have so much. You're giving us all this good stuff. I feel like my probiotic gut is in better shape after the last episode <laughs> just by talking to you. Hello, Grace. Hi, Chuck. Thank you so much. How that, are you? Your intros are just so, they make me feel really good about myself. You should feel good. I mean, I, I'm not even saying everything about you. I mean, you have a lot of stuff there to give us. Yeah. Yeah. So meal prepping, we want to talk about this today because I've seen, you have five kids, right? We have five kids. You have five yeah. kids. Well, I was saying like you, the people, but you yeah. have, you know, when you have five kids, <laughs> which is again, my bad joke, seven Canadian. I mean, when you have so many kids, <laughs> you have got to think ahead yes. of what you're going to do. And I'm blessed that I'm married to a woman who is, you know, should have been Mrs. Organization 2009. I mean, she should have been the winner because right? she always kept us ahead. But you're dealing with it personally yeah. as well, right? I only have two kids, but I think for anyone, kids, no kids, trying to figure out what's my next meal going to be. Yeah, There's so many things. We talk, we've talked about so many things already. How to get the good nutrition in. Why should we be eating probiotics? Mm -hmm. You know, trying to avoid diets and live the healthy lifestyle for the long haul. And to be honest, it does take a bit of planning. Yeah. And so meal prepping is really more than just the making the list and the buying. Are you really into the prep ahead mode where I see this being talked about a lot, even making meals and then putting them in containers and freezing them or something? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I do like a little bit of batch cooking. I'm not as good as like individualizing portions quite that way. So is that what I am? If I'm a hipster, I understand batch cooking. That's batch what I should cooking. have said, right? Yeah. Okay, I got it now. Okay. <laughs> do I get to be a hipster? <laughs> <laughs> well, you use the word, you know, you use the phrase. Yeah. So it's batch cooking. Okay. Yes, batch cooking. And the thing is, is that it feels and sounds overwhelming. It looks overwhelming. Yeah. But really, I promise you, in the long run, you save time, you save money, mm -hmm. and then it puts you in the driver's seat for your health, right? With trying to make sure that we're getting good, healthy nutrition in. A lot of times when we're dining out and having convenience foods, they're filled with extra additives and preservatives and simple things like too much salt because they're adding it for flavor and as a preservative. So again, I know it looks overwhelming, but, and also when you start doing it, you get into a pattern yeah. and it doesn't have to be a meal plan for the week. Maybe you do three days at a time. Mm -hmm. But isn't it great that you can at various times of the year, especially in the warm weather months when you're doing, and I love my crock pot. Can I just say now, I don't have that new real fast one, you know, but I've got a crock pot and we love using the crock pot. And when we do, we will be tempted to be more in the way of experimenting, where we'll throw in different vegetables and we'll throw in stuff that, well, it looks like it would be good in pea soup, honey. Let's try it. Yeah, absolutely. And it actually works out fine. And then you're sort of proud that, well, we pulled that off. Right. You know. And I'll tell you this. Yeah. So there's uh, crock pots or uh, slow cookers. Yeah. And then there's the Instapots that right. are pressure That's the cookers, new one, yeah. the new fast. Right. Crazy. And I have both, of course. But I want to remind people, you could still use your slow cooker in the summer. Yeah. You really can. Plus for busy people, when you set this thing in the morning and you come back, or if in the at the holidays, if we've gotten a, a ham, mm -hmm. we keep the bone and we yes. do one bag of peas, two quarts of water, and you add a little something, See? something, you wake up in the morning and there it is. 
Yeah, you can do that with, we talked about oatmeal too. You mm-hmm. can make an oatmeal, put it in the night before. When you wake up, you have yummy, warm, delicious oatmeal. So meal prepping to you is any and all of the above of what we've just discussed? Yes, all of those things. Yeah. And I think there's different ways that you can tackle that. Mm-hmm. So I think one of the first things that you really want to look at is what do I currently have in my pantry, my refrigerator that needs to get used up? Okay. Right. And it's funny. uh, I think I've vlogged about this before on the blog. There are different apps and websites that you can can go to where you can type in what kind of food you have and it will spit out a recipe for you. No kidding. Yeah. Wow. So less waste. Yeah. And you're using what you have already and you might not even need to take a trip to the grocery store. You know, I went out to Google out in uh, Ann Arbor Mm -hmm. for just a visit. And a cool place, real cool space. But one of the things they do is they not only have a menu, they have a restaurant where I think everybody gets to eat for free, I'm pretty sure. It's like they have baristas there, the whole thing. And in their restaurant, I'm not sure if that's what they call it, there's also a flat screen monitor that shows how much food we didn't waste today. Oh, I love that. It's the first time I've ever seen anything like that. So if you're conscious of that, and even if you're not, you stand there looking at these numbers and you think, oh yeah, they're not throwing away anything. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And as Americans, we definitely have a lot of waste. Yeah. Yeah. When it comes to food. All right. So encourage me. What would I have to get prepared for? Uh, I, I think we know why we should meal prep, but what are some of the things you think we should have? And then how do we even get, you've got kids, I've got kids, yeah. grandkids now. How, how do we get the kids involved so this becomes a family thing? Yes. So definitely. So first kind of take inventory. Mm -hmm. The next thing you want to do is then try to plan according to what you have and make your grocery list as well. Okay. And then, oh, I forgot a step. What you want to look at also is your schedule for the week, right? Mm -hmm. Do kids have dance? Do kids have soccer? Do you have an evening event? Sure. You know, for work or for life or a meeting Mm -hmm. where you're not going to be there so that you can kind of plan accordingly right? Looking at when you might be dining out so that, and I think sometimes doing that gives you even more motivation to meal plan because you know you're dining out twice already that week. Right. And whether it be because you're, you know, you're looking at your budget and looking at your meal plan as far as nutrition and what that's going to look like with your sodium or fat content mm-hmm. for the for the week. It gives you that opportunity to take a step back and say, okay, the kids have soccer at this time on this day. I have a meeting at this time on this day. Right. What are we going to do to problem solve that? And it's also like a connection point for the family. And again, even if it's just you yourself, you still have that moment of clarification and of what is this week going to look like for me? And I know that I look forward to those times where Susan has planned a meal. There are certain things I like. And, you know, I know it's got some other stuff in it, but like a green bean casserole. It drives her kind of kooky that I love cold green bean casserole. <laughs> but I love the idea that there are leftovers. That's just one example. Yes. So when you're meal prepping, I love the fact that sometimes we'll plan thinking, you know, not maybe the next day, but the day after, we've got enough beef stew or something that came out of the crock. We can go for two days on that and we don't have I know. to worry. You know? And I love that too. And I actually, it's funny because I think it's fun because after you do this for a while, you need inspiration. Yeah. <laughs> you get right, kind of bored. Right. So I try to name my days. So like Monday is either a meatless Monday or sometimes I do Mediterranean Monday. Mm. Tuesday, Taco Tuesday, of course. Yeah. But it doesn't always have to be taco, like Mexican flavored tacos, or it could be... I make this awesome taco pie, or maybe I've made like Korean flavored tacos. Like I've seasoned the meat with different um, flavors. And I think this too also opens everyone's palate a little bit Mm -hmm. to try new and exciting things that you might not have. I'm sorry, when you're naming things, is that catching on with Tom and your kids? Are they, do they know it could be taco Tuesday? Oh yeah. Oh, we have, we have it on a chalkboard in the. You do? Yeah. So everyone knows what kind of what we're having. And then I hear, sometimes I hear hoorays (laughs) and other times I hear like, wah, wah, like complaints like, oh, I don't want that. And I'm like, well, you know what? It's, it's already on the chalkboard and you had a chance to pitch in. So. (laughs) Right, right. So there's a fun factor to it. Yes. Which obviously can radiate out. Anything else that we should do in terms of getting ready? For so I was going to say the, the other days, like you mentioned with leftovers, I call those days the remix. Mm. When you get, can kind of remix something, or maybe you make extra taco meat right. so you can have taco salad or nachos or taco pie mm-hmm. on a different day. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, my, so my mom did this. My sister and I, my brother is, is 10 years younger than I am, so he didn't have to do it, but it was kids cook Thursdays. 
that was like the day that we didn't have dance class or tennis or things like that. And that was the day then w- that we got to cook a meal for the That's family. That's great. Yeah. And it wasn't, sometimes it wasn't fancy, right. but it was kind of fun to be in control of that mm-hmm. and have those moments in the kitchen with uh, my grandparents lived with us with, for part of our lives too. So they were in there with us or my mom, or we learned different cultural foods at that time. Mm-hmm. Or sometimes we just made peanut butter and jellies because that's what me and my sister wanted, you know, yeah. but it was still a, a very fun, interactive family way of having a meal together and getting in the kitchen. Good stuff. And then in your current life, are you planning ahead to the point where you said one day a week, you know, maybe it's a Sunday or a Wednesday, so you can actually plan for the week? Yes. It'll be on Sundays usually, sometimes Saturday or kind of a combination. Mm -hmm. And sometimes if I have more time, I, I just did this actually two weeks ago. I was prepping peppers and I knew that there was one day I was, oh, Tom would be so happy that I'm telling the story because he was very grateful for this. I prepped some of the stuff that he was going to cook, this deconstructed pepper casserole dish that I make. And I prepped all his vegetables where I cut all the peppers, the onions and tomatoes so that when he had to prepare it, he just had to put everything together. Oh, yeah. So it was kind of nice. And then doing things like, you know, we've talked about the sodium in soups or processed foods. Yeah. And when I make soup or sauce or chili or stew, I usually make two to three times the amount because if I'm going to do it, Mm -hmm. I might as well make more and then you can freeze the rest. Sure. And I have fun tricks for that too. So sometimes um, I will freeze in muffin tins and then once those are frozen, you kind of can put two of those in a container and know that like two or three know that that's a serving that you could take to work. Oh, interesting. So even like freezing your soup. Yes. Okay. Already in that portion. Yeah. So that I don't have to unfreeze and thaw out the whole thing. Then Tom and I can have that and bring that to work. And same thing with sauces. I will divvy it up and make a few different things with it. Or I will um, just have it in batches so that it's easily usable for the next time. Well, you know, you make a crock pot full of soup. I mean, if you really go into a full crock and then you've added enough veggies where that adds more fluid content, you've got the crock pot that keeps on giving. I mean, it's going to be a lot of soup. So whether you're getting those containers from Gordon Food Service or whatever you do, you can keep that stuff because we do it and you prep ahead and you freeze some. Absolutely. Yeah. So I'm a big... I'm a big fan of trying to do that and get ahead of the game. Well, on behalf of Tom and all husbands across <laughs> the land, I appreciate the idea. You know, because some of us, it's not just husbands, but some of us are organizationally challenged because I'm not in the kitchen all the time. I may, I balance my wife's cooking because I'm the guy who will season and taste. She will That's She perfect. will say, I've got the crock pot going with the pea soup, but I'm not going to do the finishing touches. I'm yeah. the finishing touch guy, because I love I, that. but I'm also a taster. It's just old school. And yeah. I, it may sound gross to somebody, but that's you have to taste no, it to know. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. Absolutely. And to be honest, I have a tendency to cook a little bit more bland. I try not to add as much salt. I like to use different herbs and spices. And that's another thing too. If you have a garden and you know it's producing a ton of tomatoes, mm-hmm. you know, you can make those into sauces and well, salsas sure. and different things that you can use for later, you know, canning and jarring things. I like what you said too about checking out your fridge and the cabinets, uh, you know, the cupboards to see what you have left. There was a week where uh, my wife came back and she had, for some reason, she just grabbed two bags of crinkle cut carrots. Well, once you're having one bag as a dip in something, what do you need? And she just said, it's time to make soup. I said, why? Well, because we have carrots. The entire process was based around, we have extra stuff we have to use. But see, she's in that mindset. Well, she's the main shopper. She's the saver of the fam. She saves. And she said, we have to. Yes, absolutely. And it's funny because sometimes I create recipes that way. You know, there's tons of recipes on the blog, but I consider those for anyone, just inspiration to look at it and maybe make it your own. Yeah. You know, there's, I mean, I've done that before. I've made muffins where when we went blueberry picking or something, and then we had a lot of blueberries and apples. I all of a sudden we have all this stuff. I'm like, I'm going to make this crazy fruit muffin. Let's see what happens. Uh And now that's like the muffin. So it was great. Yeah. My kids are like, that's like funfetti muffin, (laughs) but with fruit. (laughs) (laughs) That's great. So yeah, sometimes that can inspire you to make something completely new and unique that could be the next family favorite. I know when I had a friend who was on one of the low carb type diets, high protein, right? I guess would be the better way to say it. 
And I said, so what do you do for lunch, like when you're at work? or when He said, oh, I just take a can of turkey chili. And, uh, no beans, you know, <laughs> but I take turkey chili. It's protein. And I said, have you looked at the side of that? And I'm not really a nut about it, but I've now been taught as I'm right. looking. The sodium in one can of, a regular can of turkey chili is about 1,500 milligrams of salt. Two servings or something at 700 apiece, I think. I'm, I'm going by memory. I actually, I think, so, I think it's more. So maybe there are the three 1,500 servings. is half the can. Come on. I'm, I, I mean, for most of them. Well, okay, you, you know what? Because I think you do blow through your average, whatever the average is you should have in the day. And I said, do you realize all the other stuff? If you were making your own turkey chili in the crock or a pan, do whatever you want. You have complete control. Right, and oh. you could add vegetables. Yeah. <laughs> oh, even if he was on a diet. Right. You know, right. some crazy diet. Well, yeah, but tomatoes. I mean, that's yeah. not going to do it. So let's go back to the beginning, maybe. So we know we can work our way from one end of the funnel. You have a bag of carrots. You can change your whole week. I've right. seen it happen and it worked. But from the beginning, just a few quick tips we can take away, including hacks, things we should think about doing for meal prep. Check your inventory. Okay. Look at your week. Mm-hmm. Uh, meal plan and get the family's buy-in so they're a part of the process and so they can chime in on what they can help with. Yeah. And batch cook if you're making something that you can make a lot of at once and even take that batch cooking to the next level of not just freezing, but freezing it in portions where it's easy for you to take for lunch. Because again, we are spending so much money dining out and not in control then of what we're consuming that mm-hmm. why not save a little money, get some good food in, yeah. and have fun in the kitchen. And think about this notion of being in the kitchen with your family or without, even if it's just you, the mindfulness. You've already talked about this in previous episodes, and I know Cindy will get into this a little bit more too in the next several episodes coming up after episode six. This idea that you're finding quiet time, that you're able to breathe, yes. that you're able to go ahead and eat a carrot. It's okay. They, they right. won't miss one in the crock pot. Right. There's something to that. Yeah. The healthfulness of and it. And I think, too, we could also use our batch cooking if you don't have room in your freezer. That's happened to me before, too. Mm-hmm. Maybe you know a new mom that might want that. Maybe you have a loved one who's sick. Right. Uh, a family member now. who, yeah. yeah, is a senior that needs, mm-hmm. you know, more home cooked meals. Yeah. So there's a way to give back in the same sense uh, as you're learning how to cook. And don't you always feel better when you have a, a cause bigger than self? Mm-hmm. I mean, who would think that the soup you make, the homemade soup, would have the impact it could on somebody who didn't know it was coming? I know. You know? I mean, it's just a little gesture, but come on. Yeah. How nice that is. I know. It makes me, it makes me emotional because I feel like food is love. And, yeah. and we talked about food is more than fuel. Right. Food, food can be love. Food can be giving. All right, good stuff. Good to see you again. Thanks, Chuck. Good see to you see next you. time. Uh, don't forget what you're listening to right here. It is called A Healthier Michigan Podcast. It's brought to you by Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan. And if you like what you hear, you can check it out, including more from Grace's blog and all the other good information. A healthiermichigan.org slash podcast is where you can find us. You can leave a review or rating. You can find all the episodes that will be coming now as we head through time. You can also go to iTunes or Stitcher to leave those reviews and ratings and get all the new episodes on your smartphone or use your tablet. Subscribe to Apple Podcasts. You can go to your favorite podcast app or to Stitcher. Next week, we're going to talk a little bit about how you can take actionable steps Uh, In achieving your healthy goals, what can you actually do that'll get you moving? And then if you just practice them, just practice them, they turn into something great. We'll see you next time.